Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My today's lecture is a short lecture, which I recently delivered in one of the conferences. And I thought that uh, I should include this lecture in my YouTube channel because this is that this is quite a current and uh, a new tendency being uh, used um, frequently in dermatology and aesthetics. And many of the pharmaceutical companies are importing different kind of exosomes therapies for hair fall and for facial rejuvenation. So we should all know what exosomes are and how the exosomes are different from the stem cells. So let's proceed to the lecture. Definition. Exosomes are the membrane-bound extracellular vesicles that are produced by most eukaryotic cells. The eukaryotic cells are all the cells that have a nucleus. So the exosomes are actually extra uh, cellular vesicles that are produced by the cells. In multicellular organisms, exosomes are secreted in biological fluids like saliva, blood, urine, and cerebrospinal fluid. So now the definition is a little bit more clear, which is exosomes are produced by the nuclei containing cells and exosomes are the extracellular vesicles that are secreted from the cells into the body fluids like blood, saliva, or urine. What extracellular vesicles or exosomes contain? The exosomes carry nucleic acid, protein, lipids, and metabolites. So the vesicles can contain almost anything. These mediators, the, these exosomes, once they are secreted in the body fluids, they move to distant site and are the mediators of long distance intercellular communication and affect various aspects of cell biology. So the contents of the exosomes, they reach to a distant site through that membrane-bound vesicle into the body fluid. This is a picture of an exosome and you can see that within this cell membrane, there are various channels from which the contents of exosomes, they extrude out. And exosomes contain nucleic acid, both DNA and RNA, several metabolites, amino acids, and thousands of other ingredients. And exosomes can produce almost all these effects like regulation of genes, transcription and translation, survival and proliferation, reproduction and development, angiogenesis, wound healing, waste management, then immune, uh, immune responses, receptor ligand signaling, apoptosis, cell differentiation, cell differentiation, cellular migration, and metabolic reprogramming. Among these, we are concerned more with angiogenesis, wound healing, cellular differentiation, and metabolic reprogramming and regulation. What is an exosome therapy? The exosome therapy is a new medical treatment that delivers the therapeutic molecules to specific cells in the body in forms of exosomes. Unlike stem cell therapy, the exosome therapy does not involve using a, using a donor cell. Instead, exosomes are extracted from the donated human mesenchymal stem cells and sterilized. Exosomes can also be synthetically prepared. So now the first difference between a stem cell and exosome is highlighted. 
in a way that stem cell is produced from a donor cell. And it is a cell that can potentially change to any other cell. That is a stem cell. Exosome is definitely not a stem cell. It is actually the vesicles that are produced by the stem cells. So exosomes are the uh, end production of stem cell and it is not actually a cell because exosome is a vesicle. It is not a cell. It does not have any nucleus. And exosomes are synthetically prepared as well. Why there is an increase in interest in this exosome therapy? As already mentioned, exosomes can contain several metabolites and amino acids and chemicals. And they are thought to provide a mean of intercellular transmission between the macromolecular cells in the body. And these carrying proteins, messenger RNA, microsomal RNA, DNA, have a role in transmission of these ingredients to target cells. Exosomes can be a useful vector for drug delivery because they are composed of cell membranes rather than synthetic polymers and of course are better tolerated and better absorbed by the host as compared to the synthetic polymers which are seen in case of liposomes. So the the question which arises in mind of all the treating physician is the stem cell and exosome therapy, same therapy. Stem cell therapy and exosome therapy are definitely two distinct type of therapy and there are two distinct type of um, cells which are uh, involved in these therapies. As already mentioned, stem cells are the undifferentiated cells that have an ability to develop into a variety of specialized cells. And these stem cells are always produced from some source. The exosomes, I am again repeating, are not the cells. They are rather the extracellular vesicles that are produced by the cells and released into the body fluids. How the exosome therapy helps in hair loss? So the exosome may contain the ingredients or chemicals in it so that they will help in promotion of hair follicles, stimulation of angiogenesis, regulation of hair growth cycle. They will have an anti-inflammatory effect and reduce the inflammation in the scalp and it will protect the hair follicle stem cells. And uh, what is an exosome facial? The exosome containing the useful ingredients in a form of a serum is applied to the skin. And then we go for microneedling or RF microneedling or microchanneling and hence introducing the serum into the skin. And this will improve the skin laxity, the muscle atrophy, fine wrinkles, and much more. And you can consider this therapy as an advanced form of PRP face or PRP facial. Now, this slide is very important because this slide highlights the differences between the three different types of exosomes. The natural exosomes, the engineered exosomes, and the synthetic exosomes. The natural exosomes are produced endogenously by the stem cells. So all the body functions and all the functions of a cell targeted to a distant cell is produced by the extracellular vesicles that are secreted by the cells into the body fluid. And these extracellular vesicles are then transferred or transmitted to the target cells to produce the distinct effects. This is happening, uh, always happening within 
the body of a human, within a human body or body of other animals as well. So this is a natural exosome. So once a stem cell therapy is used in which the stem cells are injected into the body, the ex these stem cells will exert all its distinct effect by producing exosomes in the donor body. So the natural exosomes are part and parcel of the stem cells. There is some limitations such as homogeneity, the expensiveness, difficulty in isolation and poor targeting specificity vis-a-vis -vis the naturally produced exosomes. But for the application in clinical fields, loading of these exosomes with pharmaceutical and targeting is required. These natural exosomes are needed to be filled with um, specific pharmaceutical chemicals and there should be specific targeting if we intend that these exosomes should target some specific cell population. For this reason, several alternates have developed. The engineered exosomes. So the simple alteration of the natural exosomes by loading therapeutic compounds within them. And this loading is achieved by uh, parenteral cell-based engineering or direct post-isolation engineering. So these are the two modes by which a natural exosome is converted into an engineered exosomes. These exosomes are similar to the natural exosomes, but now they contain specific chemicals and specific target uh, molecules on their cells. And uh, if such exosomes are marketed in the um, marketed in the uh, uh, in a market, then all the stem cells are always presented by maintaining a cold chain and a temperature around about four degrees centigrade. So if you receive an exosome with while maintaining a cold chain, then you can consider that these are the natural exosomes which are engineered by adding specific chemicals and targets. Now there are a third kind of exosomes, which are the synthetic or artificial exosomes. So these are also referred to as exosome mimic, uh, mimetics or mimickers of exosomes. These are actually not the actual exosomes, but they are actually the liposomes. Because the liposomes contain, does not contain a cell membrane, rather it has a polymer. These are the blank canvases. And into these canvases, we add specific markers, lipid proteins, and RNAs. The synthetic exosomes allow the incorporation of targeting ligands and contents in an easier and controlled manner. They are most suitable for pharmaceutical uses because they are highly reproducible and easier to manufacture at large scale. So the exosomes, 90% of the exosomes in the market are actually the synthetic or artificial exosomes that are actually the liposomes that contain specific uh, chemicals into them with specific targets so that they can be produced at a larger scale and give good results. They are definitely, this, these exosomes are definitely superior to any other serum or chemical because the exosomes are uh, more easily absorbed, more concentrated, more targeted, and have a better safety profile as compared to the other serous serum or other products that are available in the market. The ethical consideration. The safety and efficacy of exosome-based therapies is still questionable because they are still in evolution stages. In cases of mesenchymal stem cell-derived exosomes, there are issues in protecting the right and privacy of donors 
whose cells are produce the exosomes. And lastly, there is a potential inequalities to access these cutting edge treatment to all. So it is assumed since these are the expensive therapies only, the rich would be able to afford these therapies and poor, no matter how uh, vital these therapies are, they won't be able to afford it. So in dermatology, we are using the stem cells and exosomes mainly for two indications, the hair uh, thinning and the facial rejuvenation. However, the stem cells and exosomes are widely used in the world in several medical indications like in joints, like in treatment of neurological diseases, in vulvovaginal rejuvenation, and in treatment of several endocrine conditions like diabetes. So the indications of exosomes is increasing day by day and indication of stem cells and exosome is increasing day by day. So there is a lot of future and promise in these kind of therapies. So in the end, there are a few pictures. You can see the differences in uh, patients, but uh, this will bring to end of this therapy. I hope my this uh, brief lecture was helpful in uh, making you understand what the exosomes are, how the exosomes are different from stem cells, how the different kind of exosomes are produced, and what, what are the future prospects of these exosomes. Thank you very much and have a very good day.